I need some changes, like fuck these wages. I took this pen and wrote some pages. I need some what changes. What up, everyone? MCI EDP Studios. Um, this is the first EDP podcast with my guest, Latin J. What up, what up? So, uh, man, thanks for being on for the first one. Yeah, I just want to say before we get started, uh, basically, I wanted to do a podcast because not because everybody else was doing it. It was just like, I really wanted to get some ideas out there. I wanted to educate and inspire people with, you know, my musical journey, your musical journey. And, you know, as many people that want to come on the podcast and share their, you know, vision or share what they're about. Um, so that's really why I wanted to do it. Uh, but everybody's doing podcasts and I know they can drown out out there, but it's just really about getting our ideas out there, you know, and being able to put it in an audio format and being able to, the whole purpose of the podcast, like I said, is to educate and inspire. So EDP podcast, volume one, episode one, you know, mixing it up. I'm going to have guests on here each time and we're going to interview them. So it'll be an interview style and, uh, We'll get to know our guests, and we'll have some fun, and hopefully you guys can learn some things, and we'll probably just ramble about some shit, you know what I mean? So, Oh, yeah, man. I appreciate you having me on, man, for real. Hell yeah. So, <clears throat> um, so we're going to get started off. Latin J, him and I have worked together for a while, so being able to interview somebody that you've worked together for a while, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask some questions that... Just so the general audience can, yeah, yeah. you know, get to know you. <clears throat> You'd be looking at me like, what, what the yeah. fuck, bro? You, uh, you already know that shit. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. I feel you, man. <coughs> so, um, tell me a little about, bit about your backstory. Tell me what you do, because it's not only going to uh, be musicians <clears throat> on the show. Yeah, so. um, I'm currently a store manager at a appliance and electronics store okay. uh, here in Muskegon, Michigan. Um, been there for about four or five years, but I've been in management for the last maybe 10 to 12 years or so. Um, but I've been writing music for about four, till I was about 14 years old, I would say. Um, I was introduced to, uh, ICP and St. Clown Posse, uh, Eminem, you know, Marshall Mathers, okay. uh, things like that. And then, uh, I started writing music at a young age, man, getting inspired by their words. And, and even though it was kind of, you know, vulgar from what, you know, the way I go, it, it inspired me in a way and, um, uh, you know, opened my mind up to it. But it was until probably a little over last year that I, uh, decided to take it seriously, you know? So, um, I, I'm here, I am in my thirties, man. You know what I mean? Right. Trying to, trying to make stuff happen. And, right. um, <clears throat> it's definitely, uh, it's definitely a crazy, crazy journey, man, for sure. So, uh, why why did you wait only a year or why did you wait until a year ago to get serious i guess uh the self belief man you know i didn't i didn't believe in myself you know and then i think that's most that's what holds most people back i think um you know i met my wife about 6 years ago um we have you know three lovely you know beautiful kids together and um she started to hear me write and started to hear me rap. And, you know, she was always there to hear me, you know, nights, two, three, four in the morning when I couldn't sleep, I was rapping. And she was like, man, you're really good. You, you need to put your music out there. You need to, you need to share this with people. And um, it was until, you know, my kids, my wife, my sisters, you know, my, my family, my support system really was like, you need, you know, you're good. You need, you need to see what you can do. Nice. And, uh, that that's kind of why I took so long, but I I don't want to be that guy that's that's laying there on his deathbed, man. You know, li dying with regrets. You know, um, if I don't make something out of this music, you know, at least I know I tried, and and that'll be all the fulfillment I'll, ne I'll ne I need. You know what I mean? Right. So, I like I like how you said that because, you know, I'm a little older in my journey. I haven't really taken it as seriously as. I should have before. I haven't yeah. known the discipline, you know, and I, I, I think that is kind of cool because really I wanted to focus this first podcast around, you know, just get started. Right. Like, that's why I told you I did this podcast because it's like, <clears throat> I just want to get started. I want to interview people. Um, 
and that's sometimes all you got to do is just get started. You're not going to be the best just to get started. You right. Know, I, right. I don't have all the equipment I need. I want to do to do this podcast, but I'm not going to wait until I get the three other cameras and the better mics and this and that and whatever. So sometimes you just got to, you know, take that jump and get started. So, yeah. I feel you, man. Um, yeah. And, and uh, just a little bit about the interview series, um, just to preface this off too, is I had a guy, I used to do interviews, right? Like, with a green screen and and I've had four or five of them on the YouTube channel. You guys can check them out. They're they're really awesome. This guy did them for me, Tanner Matthews. Mm-hmm. And uh, man, he was just he does video for a living. That's what he does all day okay. long. But he was helping me with a bunch of stuff and he edited those things and he did a great job. But uh, we kind of just lost touch. It was weird and you know I don't ish, wish no ill will with him or whatever. Right. I kind of he kind of dropped off the face of the earth. I did an interview with PL12. And, oh, yeah. and this was like a year ago and I was doing them steady and I did one with PL 12 and I did one with Chilla Pachilla in the same day. And this was last December and was waiting on them to get it edited and, and all that. So just a little backstory, but to go back to you, I wasn't trying to go on a, a, oh, yeah, a you're good. rant or anything, but to go back to you, um, this is why I wanted to do these interviews because I find that very interesting to see how you guys started where you're at. And like we kind of talked before and we obviously work <clears> together too, but just to see the progression of everything. We start this today, this podcast, yeah, yep. what we talk about today. And then 365 days, this may look completely different. Yeah. I, I, that should be our goal. Yeah. Everything about it should be completely different. I've come a, a long way. Super positive. We've way. come a long way, right. you know. So let's get back to the Latin J story. So <clears throat> you were about fourteen. You're writing rhymes, stuff mm-hmm. like that, right? That's what yeah, you're yeah. Yeah, I went to I went to Ravenna, so it was a okay. predominantly uh, white school. You know, um, predominantly, you know, just, it's just a country town. You know what I mean? A lot of right. farmers and, yeah. and nothing against that because a lot of them are. You know, I, I hold dear to my heart. You know, right. I hold Ravenna here, dear to my heart. Um, but it was just uh, as a young kid, you don't share that kind of stuff with with peers. Because um, peers make fun of you at that age, you know, kids are mean. Um, so I, I kind of just, I kept it to myself, you know, until I until I met my friend Tommy Cartier. And he's the one that introduced me to ICP and Eminem. And, and, and we started to rap together, you know, and he got me entering talent shows. And we were actually getting pretty good, you know. And he kind of, after a while when we hit high school, he kind of went his own way and and turned into the guitar and started doing rock and oh, okay. all those things, you know. Right. But he's, he continued to do music. Yeah. Um, and ironically, he was doing music with Chris Bourdon. Oh, okay. Before I hung out okay. with Chris Bourdon. So. Chris Bourdon, Cat yeah. Smasher. Yeah, so that kind of, the same person kind of inspired us both through okay. music, which was nice. ironic. And years later, we, you know, we make music together now, so. Cool, cool. All right, so uh, fast forward a little bit. Um now you took it serious about a year ago um you've been making a lot of stuff happen so uh, i've been seeing that we'll talk a little bit about that but uh why don't you say kind of elaborate a little more on um so your support system told you to take it serious so then (coughs) what was the next thing after that that was like well uh, okay well this is probably what should happen or well i started taking it seriously writing more music sharing it with more people and uh my boy Deb B E, um, you know Ryan Emery. Okay. Ryan Edward. Deb e. Shout uh, out yeah, Deb E. Deb B E. Um, told me he's like, hey man, you know I know this girl. She books shows. Chelsea Crows. Shout out to you too. I appreciate you. Um, he's like, maybe you should hit her up. You know, get get a show booked. You know, and he's like, if you feel like you can do that. And and I did a few talent shows in high school, so I knew I could get in front of a crowd. Um, so that wasn't the issue. But I hadn't done it in years, so. Um, and here I am 30 years old and then the way I write, you know, and the way I rap is a lot different. It's old school. So it's what I grew up to, you know, listening to. Um, so I, I hit Chelsea up and, um, honestly, you know, she, she booked my show. So her and Deadbeat are really the ones that got me going, you know, my wife and everyone got me writing and sharing with people. Okay. Deadbeat really, and Chelsea are the ones that really were like, okay, you're good. You need to keep booking shows. You need to put your music out there. Um, and that led to Grand Rapids shows, you know, um, Bay City, Michigan shows, 
Detroit, Michigan shows, and then I even got invited to the Bronx, which was which was a crazy experience, man. Okay. So, um, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. But uh, so, where does um, Chris Bourdon, Cat Smasher, come into play? What? Uh, well, so you guys <clears throat> were inspired by the same guy, and then yeah, what happened exactly. After that? He was doing rock music, and uh, I was doing, you know, still writing my my rap music. And uh, me and Chris actually uh, became friends in high school, probably like sophomore year, I say. Okay, so he um, went to the same high school. Yep. Okay. Um, but I moved. I moved. I, I used to live across town in Urbana, or, you know, close to town, and then I, I moved out skirts closer to Fruitport, and uh, I li- I ironically moved right around the corner from Chris and his brothers. So, you know, we we hung out. You know, we we found out we lived right around the corner from each other. So we started, you know, just hanging out. And at that moment in time, he was doing the MMA thing. He was doing the mixed martial arts. Okay. You know, he had put down the, the guitar. He had whatever, you know, and, and I would still, you know, gradually write music or whatever and just keep it to myself. Well, after years of building a friendship with Chris, probably I would say five, six years, and um, he started writing poetry, ironically. And uh, he'd come over and he was like, hey, man, can I read you some of this poetry I wrote in the spoken word, you know? He was going through some rough times, you know. And I was going through some rough times, so he was he was letting it out on the paper. Okay. And uh, so he shared it with me, and I was like, "Man, that's really good. That's deep, man." I was like, "You ever you ever think about you know, rapping that?" And he kind of laughed at me, you know, kind of snickered, and he's like, "No, <laughs> you know." And I was like, "Yeah, check this out." I grabbed a song, and I played a beat, and I rapped it for him. Ever since that day, he quit writing poetry. He was writing rap music. Okay. So I would say that was probably like six, seven years ago, I'd say. Okay. And uh, we've been writing music ever since. And a year ago, I was like, we got to do this. Okay. And uh, that's where we're at, man. So. All right, awesome. Yeah, so you guys have a group, correct? So yep. I'll bring yep. that up because yep. Lost Angels. people maybe that haven't seen this or don't know you. Obviously. Yeah, we got an album out, too, so, on all platforms. Uh, Lost Angels. So. Did a lot of engineering on that record. I think I did a lot of it. Yeah, um, you did all of it. We, we did uh, yep. Definitely did some learning and growing on that record. Mm-hmm. Um, so check that out. You can get that wor- everywhere, right? Everywhere. Yeah, on all platforms. So. Um, we are currently working on a second album right now too. So, okay. and that one's gonna. I mean, the first one's great, but this second one's gonna blow the first one out of the water for sure. So, so just to tie back in, like you know, th- that's the thing. You just gotta start. Sometimes you just gotta get it. You just gotta get it. In the, in, you just gotta in, go it's for not it, man. Be perfect. And now, and now, you know, you never know what you're made of, man. Until, until you go, go for it. Exactly. You know. Yeah. You know what you're trying to reach for. You know, it's like maybe not this first thing is going to be the most perfect thing. You know? Right. Like right. This pad, podcast is going to be fucked up. Like whatever. It's going to be like, oh, we did all this, and then something's going to be fucked up or whatever. I mean, that's just <laughs> the way shit goes. You know. But right. that's not the way to look at things. But you can always progress. But if you never get started. If your family never pushed you to do that, you would never, you wouldn't be sitting here. You wouldn't oh, man, be, I, be able to invite it to the Bronx. You I think, yeah, about exactly. Something. Like, so do you have any other passions? Obviously family and those kind of things, but I'm going to keep family talk to a minimum on here because we want to try to give as much value. You know, obviously we're mm-hmm. all family men. We all love our families. Everybody that watches probably <clears throat> loves their family, yeah. you know, but, yep. but we'll, we'll keep this more, you know, in a different lane for this particular podcast. Yeah. But, um, you know, what other... Is that something then you found passion in? As soon as you started, then you kind of seen some stuff rolling, seen the ball rolling. Oh yeah, yeah. Music's life, man. Yeah. Uh, music became life really fast. So. And then, then you kind of realized this is what I need to. This do. is this is what I was made to do. This yeah. is the feeling yeah. I need to feel. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's a beautiful. This thing is what about. I've been looking for. You know what I mean? That's the beautiful so. thing about being a creator, or even if you're a painter or anything. That's. That's the feeling. A lot of the creation comes with the feeling, you know. Exactly. Yep. The feeling and music is, you know, probably the pinnacle of most art forms. I would say. I don't want to be talking on my <clears> ass, you know. No, you're right. And being opinionated, but you know, think about all the songs that you've heard, and they give you a certain feeling. Oh man. You know, yeah. you hear this song, and it's like, oh, I heard that song when I was in this grade, and I was riding in this car, and I was eating this mm-hmm. ice cream, and so it's like exactly a, a, a direct feeling link neural link to that feeling back to that yeah. you know so um getting off on a tangent there for a second but <clears throat> so then you knew knew this is uh what you had to do so you got the los angels doing that mm-hmm. um, get some shows with 
Chelsea. Yeah. And this is all within the last how long, right? Uh, yeah, last year. So when yeah. you said a year ago, we're talking about 2000. Yeah, next right? week next week will be about a year. Um, I did a Halloween show in my own garage for my family and my friends before I did any venue, anything like that. Um, I had close friends, close family come, and I did a Halloween. That was my last or my first show. It would be a year ago uh, okay. in a week. Nice. Um, so, you know, it's I've done a lot, man. Cool. It's crazy. So I, I'm excited for 2020 for sure. And you got some big things coming up. We'll definitely talk yeah. about that as well. But what you just said right there was, was pretty interesting. You know, you're, what did you just say? You What's <laughs> what did you do you remember <laughs> <coughs> i worked all night man <coughs> and i got this kind of weird fucking cold <laughs> that's what happens man no but first like, so within the last year you got some shows yep and, yep and, you know yeah uh, it's been it's been my it's first been, show it's been one year yep. but that's the thing as creators that was my point is yeah what i was going to say is you know as long as you get started and we always want more, so it's hard to sometimes to see how far we've been in a yeah, short period yeah. of time. Because you're like thinking, you see all these people, and you always, you know, they say comparison is the enemy of joy, you know, yeah, yep. or the thief of joy rather. But uh, you you compare yourself to your predecessors or other people that um, you know you see are successful or mildly successful mm -hmm. or at least as successful as you see yourself soon, right? And then right. you know everything's a growth, obviously, but. You compare yourself to that, and you're like, man, I'm not where I want to be. Exactly. I, yep. My shit ain't that good, or, or you know, whatever it may be. And I still but, go through that. I still yeah, go yeah, through yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they call that the imposter syndrome or something like it's that, like, where it's you know, like you never think that. Some weeks are great, you know, yeah. and, and and I make waves, and I, and I do and make moves, and I'm like, man, you know, I'm like right there. I'm going to make it, you know, and then the next week is just stagnant, you know, the next few weeks stagnant. It's like, man, what are you doing, right. you know? So yeah. it, it's a challenge, man. It's it's a lot of mental, a lot of mental toughness involved in this for sure. So what is your next step? You know, building a fan base, man. Okay. You know what I mean? Uh, I think, I think I got my experience on stage. I think I can perform in front of anybody. Okay. In front of any amount of people. No problem. Um, and, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to get my feet wet. I wanted to meet promoters, other artists, I wanted to get my name out there. Now I want to build a fan base, you know what I mean, and uh, and do this together, man, and bring them on a journey with me, you know, um, because, you know, I want to give back, man. I want to give back to my state. I, you know, I want to give back to my city. You know, I want to give back to my people, man. You know, I, I got Latin J in there for a reason, you know. Yeah. I, I do this for all the, all the Latinos, man. Right. You know, so that's what I do it for. So that, Sweet, that's man. what that's what I want to do, man. So you know, you always got to have your why. You got to yep. have that strong yep. why. That's why exactly it. Yep. You know? So, um, yeah. Uh, so I know you want to get put on. You want to build a fan base. So let's talk about that a little bit. Building a fan base. I know this is new to you, but uh, you know this is a very important. This is the thing I always preach. This is the last right. thing I say. I always say, hey, listen. You, that's to say, you know. That's the number one thing you got to have when you're doing music. You you got to learn how to build that fan base. If you're not spending like 70% of your time trying to build a fan base and 30 on music, because 30% of the time, the music shit is the easy shit. Right, yeah. If oh, you're yeah. good All at day. music, All day. I'm not saying don't practice or don't hone oh, your yeah. skills, because I understand how important that is, especially being a guitar mm -hmm. player and a producer making beats. Right. You always got to be practicing. You always got to be writing something new. But if your focus isn't on networking, putting on – out valuable content something people can latch on to or get to know you by right you know there's a lot of steps to building a fan base so what are some things that you're trying what are some things that you're going to try you know what it, i mean you know I, i'd like to get you know this email list going you know uh give back to my fans you know uh free drawings free tickets to shows uh free tracks every now and then um you know, percentages off. You know, merchandise. What, whatever I can to give back. I just, I just gave away a, a free radio about okay. a week ago. Yes. Yeah, um, so I raffled that off. You know, a few, few of my friends and a few of my fans actually were sharing my stuff, um, sending me emails in the in the direct message. So you know, I would give him an entry for everyone, and uh, he won the radio. So I sent it out. Um, he's in Los Angeles, California. So 
um right. that was Dope. pretty cool man so Super anybody right. can win man so yeah it's uh it's pretty cool. I'm I'm just trying new things, man. And I'm trying to actually connect with people on a different level, man. You know, because yeah. I'm a salesman. I'm a manager. I meet new people all the time. Right. So that's kind of how I got to, how I built my clientele there. I got to build my clientele here. You yeah. get what I'm saying? So I got I got to build a friendship, man. And I think that's, that's what I got to do. I, so. I think people get lost a lot online because they think everything's automated or a robot or whatever. Right. And they don't understand that it the in person is just as important as online you can still build a lot online mm -hmm. you can build you know we're everywhere with the world wide web but to my point when you're on the internet you got to treat each one of those interactions like somebody that may come in and talk to you about something else that you're trying to sell them or, right or exactly it is, exactly yep. it, you, it, and it can't be a sales pitch you know yep. you, you really got to just you know, and that's the thing. Not every fan is for you. There's mm -hmm. fucking trolls and there's people that are yeah, gonna right, fucking hate right. on you and shit. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter. It's not like every fan is going to be for you or some shit, you know. Right. So yeah. um, it, to be able to just connect with a certain amount, you know, it's going to be a lot of people just think it's like, oh, I got to beat Drake and play in f f front of fucking a million people. Or something, right. You know, every no. show or something. And it's like he started with zero fans as well. So, mm -hmm. you know. It can be discouraging, but if you can get one fan, you can get two fans. If you can get three, you can get four. And yep, you get five, exactly. You can get ten, you know? Exactly, and, and that's that's what I try to do every show, man. Yeah. At least get one or two new fans, um, one or two new, you know, Facebooks, whatever, whatever I can get, you know, any social media I can get from them, you know, just any kind of connection I can get because I'm trying to sell myself, man. You right. Know? So. And your ideas uh, and your yep, music. Yep, you know, exactly. Right? So, um. um Let's go back to a little bit of Latin J stuff. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about now. Now you want to build a fan base for this upcoming year, and then what? What else do you are you are your plans as far as your music? What, I mean, what content, out, what's going uh, on? visuals. You know, a lot, yeah. a lot more music videos. I didn't, I didn't really do many music videos last year. I didn't have much content. You know, when I look at the top rappers in this game. You know, their Instagrams are blowing up. They're doing, you know, four, f five to ten posts a day on, on each platform. You know, they're doing lives. They're doing yep. whatever. And it could just be them eating a meal. But the thing is, is they're building content, you know. So as a guy that, you know, don't know anything about this game, that's never done anything, you know, I look at people that got what I want, and, and then I try to I try to mold it and make it my own, you know, and I, I need to build content. I don't need to use their content per se. Right. But I need to build Latin J content and show people what I'm about and what I do. You know what I mean? Because I work hard, man. Right. Yeah. I we mean, work hard. Right. I, I think that's uh, one way to look at that, too. And I know we've talked about this a little bit, but, like, think of it more as a documentation instead of like oh i gotta try to do this on top of writing this song and doing it you know what right I'm right so because i'm i'm myself even with this podcast and some of the video stuff we've been doing you know obviously we've done some stuff tony and i've done some stuff so uh drew and i got a cook up i've been trying to do more videos and more content myself mm -hmm. So ramping that up, just thinking about that, you know, document your shit. You know what I mean? It don't have to be nothing crazy. And exactly. Content doesn't necessarily have to be some edited, drawn out video or some long ass, long form podcast like this. Exactly. You know, yep. It doesn't necessarily have to be that. But if you're somewhere, take snap a picture, tell the story, ask a question. You know. Mm -hmm. So, and well, social media marketing. We can talk about that on a whole different level. You know, on some other podcast. But uh, I mean. Right now, just content is king. You got to be putting it out all the time. Exactly. And putting out as much as you can, and some of it's going to suck. Not everybody will resonate, but if you keep consistent, finally you'll mm -hmm. poke your way through, you know? Yeah, I got I got some content coming out from uh, my New York trip. That'll be on that 2020 Vision video that we're oh. going to shoot um, here soon. So I think that'll that'll be some good so content for everybody. So that's your next step, shooting a video, 2020 Vision? Yep, yep, and that'll be uh, a single for, you know, my next album. Okay, um, dope. Yep, and that'll be on sale, um, like I said, as a single, and you can buy that any, anywhere on all platforms, 99 cents when that drops. So so is that what you're going to do, is you're just going to release singles, and then yeah. you got an album, you just come yep. back to this I'll, one I'll, album uh, and just I'll, keep dropping I'll drop, singles? I'll drop maybe, you know, four or five singles, and then have another, you know, four or five songs that people didn't get to hear. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So you're just going to kinda, focus on the singles kinda, first. Kind of let them, you know, grasp it and be right. like, hey, this is fire, this is lit, yeah. I like this one too. 
let me buy this album. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, so, think, I think that's the way to go anymore. Albums are kind of a... Uh, Man, they're kind of hard. It gives you yeah. an opportunity oh, yeah. to see what people are biting on and, and yep. uh, being able to build fans because you might put something and it might not get as great of a response. Right. But you got to test the waters. And if you're not even there yet building that fan mm -hmm. base and you're just throwing shit out there, like it's. It, it's I'm just. I'm tough. I'm open minded in this game, right. man. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? And every so, fan's important. I'm, I'm just know? trying to do what I can to make it, man. That's it. I've been sitting here so. this whole podcast with my zipper down. What up, bitches? <laughs> <laughs> I always fucking do that. I never zip up my zipper. I don't know why. Uh, it's not because I'm lazy. It's because I'm busy. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. Fucking next 2020. I actually produced that joint, so that I really like that joint. Yeah. Um, it's one of my favorites for yeah, sure. It's got That one's got some good feeling to it. And then we'll see what we're going to do with the video. And... Uh, then after 2020, you're just gonna put out another single and go from there. Yeah, I got a, I got a couple singles. Um, I, I got a, a banger that we're working on actually right now. Okay. I don't got a name to it yet, but it, it's gonna, gonna be nice. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna be nice. Um, and then uh, I got that claim to fame that you produced also. Okay. As well. So nice. So, yeah. um, to get to bring some value, to give some value, you know, and, and to kind of maybe we'll start head in this direction we wanted to say we just wanted to begin we wanted to get this podcast in it's not going to be perfect it's not going to be the most well lit the best audio but we wanted to get it in we want to get it out there right how you practice how you get good obviously you'll be on here more and then you know as we expand we can do more things hopefully we can talk again in a year like i said and everything is going to look and then feel and be completely different and oh better. man i hope so yeah so that's the goal but at least we'll be able to talk about some accomplishments. So never forget your accomplish your accomplishments this far. Every small step is a great step towards what you're working on. Right. right? Yep. So Yeah, uh my New Year's resolution this year was uh to do my first show. I think I've done uh sixteen so nice. far. So nice. Yeah. Cool. So that's the reason why I want to have this man on because he has just started and he's getting started late. So he's already kind of fucking not saying you're getting started late. Hey, I got you, bro. man. Hey, music. But, uh, just uh, doing everything against the odds of what people say you couldn't do, most likely. We all are. We all are going against the grain some way or, you know. Right, so right. It, it's just fucking get started and do it man just put something out there and get out there we're all gonna fucking die anyway and yeah. it could be any time so why not just share your shit with the world share you with the world and i and hear you man nobody likes it then fuck them you, you know, know? You, you got j cares. cole in his 30s you know what i mean nipsey right. hustle was in his 30s man right. i mean you, you got am in his 40s you know it's all I mean, everything it's possible man so. everybody has their own timeline for shit you know yeah. and everybody yeah. realizes shit You're at right. different times it's all part of the and, journey you and know? i and i feel like uh Rap music, I wouldn't say hip hop, you know, because hip hop, you know, is the new school, you know, um, you know, they're in that category, man. I consider them hip hop, but rap music, I think, has been in a decline, you know, lyricism. So, you know, I feel good and I feel like this is my time, you know, to bring that music back, man, and to let kids know and future kids know it's okay to be a lyricist. You know what I mean? Right. You ain't you ain't gotta be talking about Gucci Gang and Bang yeah. Bang and this and right. that. You know what I mean? Actually, have some creativity and express yourself to the world, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Show people the true art of yourself. You know what I mean? So that that's why I take this lyricism stuff you know, pretty seriously. Um, yeah. But so, I don't knock their style, you know what right, I mean? Right. It works for them, you know. I appreciate their style. I appreciate hip-hop, you know. So that's just not my thing. You know? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's definitely some lyricists out there killing, and it's just... It feels like the mainstream thing yep, is yep. more the dumbed down thing, but that's like with mm -hmm. any genre. It doesn't matter. It's it's pop four chord right. or whatever. But um, you know, and some of it isn't terrible. No, you know? no, I mean, it's you know, not. And like I said, my personal taste. I, I bump, I, you know, I bump some of it. Right, that's what right. I'm saying. You know. So, but as far as a lyricist, um, why do you think that's? Why do you think that being a lyricist resonates with you over just um, making a song that maybe? It helps me. Uh, it helps me connect with the the artist you know what i'm saying um you know i can i can resonate with their words and their lyrics and and understand that i was there at one point you know what i'm saying to a guy that you know is talking about dealing drugs or getting locked up you know what i mean i can't resonate with that you know so right. so much because I ain't, I ain't never done stuff like that yeah. you know what i mean 
They need but, to want to be somebody. You're but not, you, know? you know, when they're when they're a lyricist and they're talking about the streets, I can still resonate on when they're happy, when they're sad. You know what I mean? When they're when they're uh, when they're shook. You know what I mean? Uh, just just a lot of things that they they talk about, I can resonate with. So, uh, lyricist, I can really just I can read their mind, man. It's like a book. You know what I mean? I, they open up, and I and I can almost feel like I'm one with that person for a minute in time. And it's almost like they're talking to me, you know what I mean? Okay, yeah. Um, and those other songs, like I said, they're nice club bangers. I bump them in. I like to I like to lift weights with, to it, like right. to just cruise with it. But right. on those days that I need, you know, I need music, I can't be messing with something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's what resonates. I need, yeah, I need, I need some yeah. real music, man. Yeah. You know, I, when, when I need something to pick me up, you know, and that's what those lyricists are there for. You yeah, that's, I mean? that's so you know that's what I tend to uh, lean towards too. You know, it's more the lyricist type thing. So if people are checking Latin J out. Yeah, he is a lyricist. But I hope that you would take the time if you're actually watching this podcast. We appreciate it. I do one, for sure. Two, if you're taking the time to watch us or peep this out, just check out Latin J's music. I'm sure we'll play a little bit on the intro and the outro for you guys. And if you got Amazon Alexa, everybody's got Alexa nowadays. Yeah, we got that. You, shit. you just you know Follow. Alexa. Play songs by Latin J, and then she should pop up changes, um, and then oh, you'll be able to listen dope. to the whole album. So nice. that's on there for you. Super dope. Cool. So. Awesome. So we're going to wrap this thing up. I don't want to keep these too terribly long. I hope you guys got something out of this. We'll have Latin J on again, and we're working on stuff right now. He's pretty fresh to the game, yep. but, you know, get started, guys. Like I said, this podcast – fucking we just doing it you know i see this shadow in the background it's probably fucking annoying and whatever but <laughs> we just did it and we got to oh, put yeah. it out there and we'll do more i appreciate we'll it more. yeah thanks for coming on and i i really hope you guys do get inspired by him he's only been doing this shit for a year he has gotten 16 shows and his goal was one so at least he didn't stop at his goal or didn't yeah. try and uh, yeah and I know. Uh, real quick before we go though, getting those shows. What what was the most important thing is like getting those different shows to you? What was the most important skill as a rapper that you had to have to be able um, to get those shows? I would say what what made me stand out to make those promoters um, continue to book me or want to book me was I don't rap to a backing, you know. So when I perform, I perform my song live. I do the hook, I do the verses. So if I mess up, you hear it. You know what I'm saying? I don't have a my track in the background to save save my ass and right. mess up, you know what I mean? Um, and then I would I would network with them, man. You know, I, I'd hang out with Chelsea. I'd talk to Chelsea. I would talk to the other artists. And then eventually I'd build a friendship, and they'd be like, hey, man, I got this opening for this show. Hey, I got this slot. Because they knew I could go up there, and they knew I could perform. Um, so I figured once I show these people I can perform, I build a friendship with them. They're going to want me. And and they have, and they've continued to book me. I just got asked to book November 2nd uh, at Simon's after dark. But unfortunately, I'm not going to do that. I'm taking some time off right now and just kind of concentrating on, you know, the fan base and everything. But Castmaster will be there, and I'm going to go support him. So Cool. Nice. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I'm going to wrap this thing up. Thank you guys for tuning in and listening. Please like, share, and subscribe. Latin J on the mic on Instagram, yep. Facebook. So I'll put Everything, that stuff. Yep. It'll also be in the links below. And EDP, Exit Door Productions, for all your music needs. Thanks for checking out the podcast. And uh, much love to you guys. Peace. Peace out. I took this pen and wrote some pages. I need some changes. I like, fuck these wages. I took this pen and wrote some pages. I need some changes. Like fuck these.